In the summer of 2008, as the price of oil peaked to a record high, a polar explorer and a group of city bankers decided to turn a former gaming company into an oil and gas investment company targeting one of Africa's most unstable corners, Nigeria. Investors were told the new business would find an oil asset in the shallow waters of the Niger Delta with the help of a local prince, partner with a company to extract the oil, and sell it on to an oil major for a profit. To fund this new venture, Sirius Petroleum was listed on the alternative investment market, AIM, London's junior stock market that allows small companies to raise funds by floating shares. Critics have denounced the market's weak regulation, which has won the exchange a casino reputation. Behind the scheme was millionaire Andrew Regan and his Cayman Islands registered investment vehicle Corvus Capital. Together with a group of established city operators, Regan reportedly made a fortune on AIM, buying into shell companies and transforming them into lucrative ventures. Sirius appears to be another example of this strategy. This third part of Desmog UK's Empire Royal investigation shows how the identity of serious true beneficiaries are hidden through nominee accounts and vehicles based offshore, how a tight network of exclusively male and established city lawyers, bankers and accountants finance the new venture, creating complex company structures and connections that All beyond public scrutiny, how the involvement of anonymous vehicles and partners helped serious broker deals in Nigeria, a country known for its minimal environmental standards and history of corruption, the ties between serious and nominee advisors regulating it and the record of advising companies that have been accused of corporate wrongdoing. A decade after Sirius was formed not a drop of oil has yet been produced, with shareholders, including high street banks and pensions funds such as HSBC, Barclays and Hargraves Lansdowne, still waiting for the promised returns on their investments, licensing issues, aborted deals and lengthy funding negotiations were cited by Sirius to explain some of the delays over the development of its oil asset, while thanking shareholders for their patience. Parts 1 and 2 of Desmog UK's Empire Royal investigation show how extractive companies use London as a hub to pursue polluting activities in emerging markets around the world. Part 1 shows how oil companies based in London use the secrecy laws of tax havens which allow companies' beneficial owners to remain anonymous. The second part highlights criticisms of AIM's cavalier approach to regulation and weak disciplinary mechanisms, which critics have blamed for creating a safe space for corporate malpractice and wrongdoing. This final article shows how one company, Sirius Petroleum, used this system of anonymous vehicles and nominee accounts. All individuals and companies named in this story were contacted by Desmog UK for comment. Desmog UK's investigation does not present evidence of wrongdoing or illegal behavior by Sirius but shows how both weak city regulation and the ongoing use of offshore accounts allowed the company to withhold information about its company structure and beneficial owners from investors. Due to this system, and despite operating in Nigeria's corruption-ridden oil industry, Sirius was able to operate beyond robust scrutiny. This story falls against a backdrop of calls for regulatory reform on AIM, with critics saying the market's self-governance is not fit to prevent corporate wrongdoing. Mark Benley, director of ShareSec, a not-for-profit organization that aims to promote investors' rights, previously said experienced AIM investors considered the market to be full of dubious businesses led by dubious people. He added that the market's regulatory function is not fit for purpose and that good British businesses that deserve investment are tarred in some investors' eyes with the same brush as the two numerous aim frauds. Following extensive research, important information about how Sirius operates remains hidden from public records, raising questions over the accountability of UK companies run from the heart of London. During AIM's 23-year history, secrecy over company ownership has repeatedly been at the heart of scandals that have seen companies going bust or kicked off the exchange. 
A major investigation by Global Witness previously revealed how former cricketer Phil Edmonds and his business partner Andrew Groves used offshore shell companies to take millions of pounds from investors in a series of questionable Africa-related investments. Edmonds and Groves denied any impropriety. The publication of the Panama Papers and the Paradise Papers laid bare how tax havens and offshore jurisdictions have been used by the world's elite and wealthy to launder money, evade tax and finance dirty ventures. At a time when the UK claims to act as a global climate leader, London City is still acting as a financing hub for companies carrying out fossil fuel extraction abroad. The London Stock Exchange, which runs AIM, did not respond to Desmog UK's repeated requests for comment. An extractive company on AIM London has long been a place where extractive oil, gas and mining companies have met investors to fund their ventures around the world. This is no different for those companies listed on AIM, which boasts a heavy presence of extractive companies, with 190 listed oil, gas and mining companies compared to only 13 operating in alternative energy. While these companies are part of the city's core financial activities, much information about their ownership remains hidden within opaque offshore accounts. Most AIM-listed extractive companies are not involved in any wrongdoing or illegal activity, but cases of corruption, fraud and environmental and human rights abuse in countries with weak governance have previously been reported across the sector. At a time when the world is striving to move away from fossil fuels, calls for transparency and accountability resonate across the industry more than ever before. The UK is one of 51 countries to have signed up to the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative EITI, a global standard aimed at promoting open and accountable management of a country's oil, gas and mining resources. Under the scheme, companies incorporated in the UK have to disclose payments made to government agencies, including those that are overseas. The EITI is to become more stringent, with plans for all countries implementing the scheme to ensure that by 2020 companies that apply for or hold a participating interest in an oil, gas or mining license or contract in their country disclose their beneficial owners. Who is Andrew Regan? From its offices in a private business club at the heart of Mayfair and a luxury block in St. James's area, Sirius gives an insight into how small oil companies can flourish on AIM. Sirius Board of Directors includes investment bankers and accountants with many other companies to their names. One of Sirius key backers is Geneva-based businessman and self-proclaimed polar explorer Andrew Regan. A serial lister of small companies on AIM, Regan owns the ins and outs of London's junior market. He was credited by Monaco-based entrepreneur Nigel Robertson with establishing the structure for listing cash shells on AIM. Sirius is one example of this. Regan's financial dealings have previously come under close scrutiny. In the late 1990s, Regan was accused by the Sirius Fraud Office SFO, of stealing £2.4 million from his food company and of masterminding a robbery attempt in a bid to take over the co-op. The co-op directors involved were later jailed for accepting £1 million. Following a six-year saga, Regan was eventually cleared of any wrongdoing. A statement at the time, Regan said, I have always maintained my innocence and so I am delighted to have been vindicated by the jury's verdict. A decade later, Regan reportedly made a fortune through his offshore investment vehicle Corvus Capital by buying into other cash shell companies and floating them on AIM. At the time, Regan hailed AIM as a super place to do business and praised its regulatory system. The regulators have done a superb job in creating a good environment, you have got reasonable liquidity and it is a properly regulated area in which to invest, he said. Following a record profit of £22.1 million, Regan privatized Corvus Capital in 2008 which meant information about the company's backers and owners no longer had to be disclosed. 
At the time, Corvus Capital declared it had moved away from stable cash-generating businesses towards more speculative opportunities. Sirius appeared to be one of them. Find out more about shell companies here Russian dolls, secrecy laws and anonymity secrecy laws protecting offshore-based entities allow companies to hide the identity of their owners. It is not illegal for a company to register offshore, neither does it imply its owner is involved in tax avoidance, evasion, or corruption. However, the tax haven system is designed in a way that makes it much more difficult to expose those companies that are involved in such activities. Sirius Holding Company, a parent company used to own shares of another company, Sirius Oil & Gas, is registered in the British Virgin Islands. BVI's disclosure rules mean the owner's identity is hidden from public records. In 2008, Sirius entered an agreement with Lagos registered company Talent Oil Nigeria Limited, which it described as a Nigerian private company owned and managed by Nigerian nationals who have considerable knowledge and contacts in the Nigerian oil industry. Under the agreement, Talent agreed to use all its reasonable efforts to seek out opportunities for Sirius. According to company records, Sirius Oil & Gas Limited, a subsidiary of Sirius Incorporated in England, which is not to be confused with Sirius' parent company which has the same name and is incorporated in the BVI, owns 50% of Sirius Talent Petro Limited, a Nigeria-based joint venture between Sirius and Talent created to carry out business activities in Nigeria. Records show Sirius Oil & Gas, which is owned entirely by Sirius, has the right to acquire the remaining shares in the joint venture with Talent, and has management and operating control of the company. However, Sirius does not disclose the beneficial owner of Talent Oil Nigeria, whose company records are held in Lagos. Like a Russian doll, Sirius is set up through a string of nominee accounts and investment vehicles making it difficult to attribute how much of the company is owned by any individual. This is not illegal, but it does make ownership hard to trace. Find out more about nominee accounts here like Russian dolls, nominees accounts and anonymous vehicles are used to hide who the true owner of a company is. Image Credit, Max Pixel, CC0 This is how it worked, Ambison Limited, a shell company registered in the British Virgin Islands, was used to hold Regan's shares. Ambison Limited was a nominee account for Regan's investment vehicle Bowden Group Holdings, which was registered in the Cayman Islands, and was later re-registered in the name of Jersey-based Brew Nominees Channel Islands, Limited. Both Ambison Limited and Bruin nominees Channel Islands Limited were listed among Sirius' main shareholders, as they owned more than 3% of the company's share capital until the end of 2012. Buying share capital through a nominee account is not illegal. Nominee accounts are commonly used to facilitate share trading and spare investors' administrative paperwork. However, senior executives, or anyone with managerial responsibilities, in a listed companies are obliged to notify their companies of any dealings of their shares. Directors of a company listed on the exchange are also subject to restrictions over when they can buy and sell shares in the company, or could face accusations of insider trading. means they're dealing shares while having inside knowledge of the company's activities that has not yet been disclosed to shareholders. Insider trading is illegal and can relate to any employee who has unpublished price-sensitive information about their company when they deal in its shares. There is no evidence that Sirius is involved in insider trading. Sirius did not respond to Desmog UK's repeated requests for comment. Daniel Bollind Curdy, head of investigations at NGO Global Witness, who has worked with the team credited with revealing some of AIM's biggest scandals, described Desmog UK's investigation as fitting into the bigger picture. 
He described AIM as a closed shop and a boys club with no serious scrutiny, where companies run a serious risk of malpractice. He added, the fundamental issue remains that there is no proper enforcement and self-governance does not work. The use of offshore accounts that protect the company owner's identity have been highlighted as a key element of fraud allegations against AIM-listed companies. In 2015, one of AIM's most highly traded companies, mobile technology company Globo PLC, was forced off the stock exchange after it was revealed the company stood accused of the falsification of data and the misrepresentation of the company's financial situation. A report by equity fund Quintessential Capital Management claimed that Globo had created fictitious sales from shell companies located offshore which were posing as legitimate clients, while other shell companies were posing as fake suppliers. It also accused the company of having fabricated financial statements. The Financial Conduct Authority opened an investigation into the allegations. Globo's chief executive resigned after admitting falsification of data and having misrepresented the company's financial situation. Controversial Romanian businessman Frank Timis also used his AIM-listed mining company African Minerals to personally authorize a $50 million, 37 million pounds, payment to a shell company in Cyprus in which he owned a secret stake, an internal investigation by the company revealed. The report stated that Timis strongly denied the allegations and that an independent investigation did not discover any direct evidence to support the allegations which were therefore neither proved nor disproved. The following year, African Minerals, once AIM's most highly valued company, went into administration. A Nigerian affair global watchdog Transparency International has identified Nigeria as one of the most corrupt countries in the world, with low environmental and human rights standards. Oil majors Shell and ENI are currently standing trial for bribery over the purchase of an offshore oil field in Nigeria in one of the biggest cases to hit the industry in recent years. A child fishes in an oil-polluted river in Ogun Island, Niger Delta, several spills by oil giant Shell a decade ago. Image credit, milieu defense e, Flickr, CC by NC saw 2.0 through its connections in the Niger Delta oil industry, ties to government officials and a crafted PR strategy, Sirius presented its Nigerian venture as a lucrative opportunity for its shareholders. The company said it was confident of its capacity to exploit a marginal oil field, citing its network of contacts in Nigeria including within the Lagos State Government, the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Nigerian Tax Authorities, NNPC, Nigeria's state-run oil company, and other major oil companies. There is no suggestion that Sirius was involved in illegal activity in Nigeria. Chris Newsom, from Stakeholder Democracy Network SDN, an NGO which works to empower communities in the Niger Delta affected by oil drilling, told Desmog UK about the risks associated with exploiting marginal oil fields in Nigeria. The shallow waters of the Niger Delta are vulnerable to so many things, he said, citing the return of militant groups as not off the cards, thinking that offshore oil exploitation is more secure is just not true, especially for a company new to the oil sector in. Nigeria, he added, find out more oil exploration in the Niger Delta here Nigerian Connections, a university graduate and a local prince Oluke Odolufemi Kuti was 23 years old when he was appointed to the board of Sirius to act as the interface between the company and its Nigerian operations. Sirius described him as being instrumental in successfully establishing the company's business network in Nigeria. According to the company, Kuti studied economics and psychology at Duke University, U.S., and worked as an investment advisor for a South African investment fund, Puxton Capital. The South African company registrar shows Huxton Capital is located in Plumstead, London, while Kuti's address on company's house refers to an apartment block in Bayswater, London. 
How this London-based university graduate with no reported experience in the oil and gas industry secured a position at the top of an AIM-listed company remains unclear. In 2013, Kuti was appointed chief executive of Sirius and remains at the head of the company today. He was not the only person appointed by Sirius for his strategic connections in Nigeria. Babatunde Olushigenigbula, a former Exxon Mobil employee, joined the company as its non-executive chairman after 30 years in the oil and gas industry in Nigeria. Igbula was also connected to two Nigerian-based companies, Bolid Energy and RT5 Petroleum Limited, founded by former ExxonMobil and Chevron employees. Both companies entered an agreement with Sirius to use their local knowledge, contacts and significant experience in the region and industry to provide Sirius with exclusive opportunities, the company said. RT5 Petroleum was responsible for managing all aspects of the interface with the Nigerian government and local communities. RT5's chairman Prince Tunda Akindel was described by Sirius as well connected in the Ondo state of the Niger Delta where Sirius's oil asset is located. A native of Okitipapa, in Ondo state, the prince was described by Sirius as having considerable local knowledge and contacts. Akindel was on the board of directors of the African Business Roundtable, an association of business leaders set up by the African Development Bank, and was an executive member of the Association of Petroleum Products Importers and Traders in Nigeria. On the lookout for marginal oil fields in the Niger Delta extractive companies seeking assets in developing countries with known corruption or a lack of information about geological resources are a particular risk for fraud, Daniel Bollind Curdy, of Global Witness, previously told Dismog UK. He pointed to prior cases of companies overstating the value of their asset to attract investors. AIM investors can be dependent on company news to stay informed about various ventures' progress, particularly when a company's assets are located abroad, this can sometimes lead to disclosure problems. In 2009, Regal Petroleum was fined a record £600,000 by AIM's disciplinary committee for failing to ensure the information notified was not misleading, false or deceptive. The company had been accused of issuing a series of misleading statements telling investors it had found an oil field worth $1 billion, 74 million pounds, which turned out to be commercially unviable. In a statement, Regal Petroleum said it was disappointed at the outcome, and that it there was no suggestion that its management team conducted their responsibilities in anything other than a proper and professional manner. While not legally required to do so, Sirius appears not to have shared all of the information about its assets with shareholders, Dismog UK has found. In October 2011, Sirius entered a strategic partnership with Iwena Oil & Gas, a vehicle owned by the Ondo State in Nigeria, and Guarantee Petroleum over the development of the Aurora Marginal Oil Field OML95 block. The location of the Aurora Oil Field OML95 Image Credit Google My Maps Awena Oil & Gas has reportedly been involved in litigation with the Ondo State after a lawyer and four others were accused of forgery and irregular dealing with the records of the company and of allotting shares to some individuals. One local specialist outlet reported that a government official unlawfully received half a million dollars from Sirius over the sale of the Wina share in the Aurora field, without the approval of its board of directors. The Federal High Court in Lagos reportedly fixed a hearing for 9 October 2014 for the consolidation of the suit filed by Wena Oil & Gas against the Ondo state government over alleged conversion of its assets. Dismog UK could find no reports on the outcome of the hearing. Voice Club, a close-knit network of advisors have been involved in overseeing serious activities during its time on AIM. The market's regulatory system encourages close ties between listed companies and the private companies they pay to regulate them, also called nomads. 
Over the years, critics have blamed this structure for failing to prevent previous cases of malpractice. Part 2 of Desmog UK's Empire Royal Investigation outlined this system in detail. In the last 10 years, four different companies have acted as Sirius Petroleum's nomad and were responsible for carrying out due diligence on the company throughout its AIM listing. These were Canaccord Adams, Strand Hansen, Karen Financial Advisor and Kander Fitzgerald. Strand Hansen declined to comment but a spokesman said the company abides by all relevant law and regulation at all times. No other nomad responded to Desmog UK's request for comment. Each of the companies have strong ties with Sirius Board of Directors, sometimes acting as its broker, or have a history of advising companies that be listed from AIM amid allegations of corporate wrongdoing and fraud. Two of Canaccord Adams senior employees joined Sirius Board of Directors when Canaccord was acting as the company's nomad. Cantor Fitzgerald, Sirius Petroleum's current nomad, also has a history of advising companies who went on to be involved in alleged corruption cases. In 2016, Cantor Fitzgerald resigned from advising AIM listed Sable Mining after its chief executive Andrew Groves was indicted for corruption and bribery in Liberia, Reuters reported. In February, Groves issued a statement claiming all charges against him and Sable Mining were irrevocably dropped by the Liberian authorities. It added, both Mr. Groves and Sable Mining strongly refuted any allegation that they had acted unlawfully in relation to Sable's business affairs in Liberia or indeed elsewhere. Speaking to Global Witness, Fonati Kaffa, the man who oversaw the Liberian task force charged with investigating allegations of bribery against Sable Mining and Groves claimed he was aware of no comprehensive investigation that exonerated these people, adding, as former chairman of the task force I would have been notified, Cantor Fitzgerald bought Seymour Pierce, a private company that acted as the nomad for mining firm Kamek, itself accused of dubious activities in Zimbabwe and the Democratic Republic of Congo. In 2011, Seymour Pierce received a record fine by the London Stock Exchange for breaching AIM rules and failing to undertake due diligence and to properly assess the appropriateness of a company seeking admission to AIM. Seymour Pierce was the largest nomad on AIM, advising 74 companies. Its senior team continued to work for Cantor Fitzgerald. Seymour Pierce's chief executive Philip Whale at the time said in a statement that he agreed with the findings and accepted the sanctions. Since these events, we have put in place major changes and are confident that our systems and procedures are now of the highest standard, he said. Find out more about Sirius Petroleum's nomads here on at least one occasion, work to establish the veracity of Sirius oil as it appears to have gone uncompleted. In 2011, Professor Chris Tumazu, a chief scientist at the Institute of Biomedical Engineering at Imperial College in London, was contracted to use his contacts in the petroleum industry to estimate the oil reserves of the Aurora Fields. Professor Tumazu was no stranger to Regan. Indeed the pair worked together during Regan's first transantarctic expedition in 2010, Regan's main claim to being a polar explorer. But it appears the estimation of oil reserves by Professor Tumazu's contacts never happened. In an email to Desmog UK, Professor Tumazu confirmed he had agreed to provide consultancy services to Sirius Petroleum but was never called upon to do so.